Upon release, Yoi Miyaz was one of the worst received five star characters of all time. Why do I feel like I've been saying this every video lately? People said she was weak, three star Hu Tao, two star Zhang Ling, totally not worth it, complete disappointment, buggy, broken kit, and she was actually one of the few characters that content creators actively advised against people wishing for. She's gone through quite a few ups and downs, receiving indirect buffs through new characters and indirect nerfs by not receiving too much through Dendro and low investment teams like Hyper Bloom doing similar things as her. But despite all of this, she remains one of my most used characters and one of my all-time favorites. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Yoimiya is an on-field single target damage dealer that infuses her normal attacks with Pyro. She can vaporize a good chunk of that damage and benefits greatly from her range, ease of use, and a lot of people really like that she doesn't need to build energy recharge. Her main drawback is her lower damage potential compared to Hu Tao or Zhang Ling, as well as a heavy reliance on shielding and interruption resistance to optimize her personal damage. What she lacks in raw damage numbers can often be made up for with comfort and ease of use and the range that she has. For example, sometimes even though she's not that great in AoE, you'll have enemies scattered across different sides or enemies that move around a lot, such as Thundering Manifestation, Perpetual Mechanical Array, or the Mirror Maiden that sort of teleports here and there, and her ranged auto attacks make quick work of these types of enemies and make them from being kind of painful to fight to being really, really easy and simple. In ungroupable AoE high DPS check requirements, she does tend to struggle a little bit more. So there are certain types of abysses like this current one where it feels really bad to bring her and she's kind of worse than most in that case. But she does honestly still shine in those single target scenarios. She's just in this awkward place that even as a free to play player, as long as you have Kuki, Sing Cho, and Dendro Traveler, you can pretty much make up a team that is just as comfortable to use against most enemies, even those tricky ones, and does very, very similar damage, even though it has no five stars on that team and you get them all for free. So she's very much a character that will not necessarily enhance the strength of your account on her own. She's definitely more of a character that you get because you like her. But at least for me, when I got her, I was pleasantly surprised by how many cases there were that I just enjoyed using her a lot more than, for example, Hu Tao. And to be honest, I don't even have Zhang Li, so I don't even have access to her best team yet. I'm sure my opinion well of her will only increase as I'm able to build her optimal teams. Since release, she's gotten certain buff through other characters that synergize well with her kit. Toma, for example, at Constellation 6, really has perfect synergy with Yoimiya in that he activates Pyro Resonance. He has a shield that's really, really, really strong that gets refreshed from your characters using their normal attacks, and he also buffs normal attacks with his C6. So Toma is actually a really, really great choice for your Yoimiya. One of my favorite te Yoimiya teams is Vivi Vape Yoimiya with herself, Yolan or Sing Cho, Toma, and Kazuha. The second buff that Yoimiya received is Yunjin. Yunjin is a really, really excellent buffer and basically is Yoimiya's signature dedicated support. Although she can buff other characters, Yoimiya is basically the only character that fully uses Yunjin's normal attack buff. And when properly invested in, Yunjin gives a similar buff, unlike mine, apparently. Yunjin gives a similar but even greater buff than Bennett does. And especially if you use her in double geo to activate geo resonance with Zhong Li, she makes Yoimiya even stronger. And I'm personally, again, really excited to get Zhong Li so I can make use of her properly. Because I will say, without Zhong Li, she doesn't feel as impactful without that geo resonance. The final buff she received is from Yelan. Because Yoimiya doesn't require as much hydro to vaporize all of her hits, unlike Hu Tao, Yoimiya can use Yelan as the solo hydro on the team to add additional damage and vaporize Yoimiya's hit. And of course, if you're running Zhong Li or Toma, you don't need that defensive utility that Sing Cho brings you, and Yelan ends up being a straight up upgrade for most Yoimiya teams. She can also use double hydro very well. I really like double hydro with Toma. Double hydro with Zhang Li is going to be even better for that universal shred. She can also use electro characters pretty well, like Fischl and Beidou, although I don't like those teams as much. And her actual best AoE team is a Burgeon team, which is pretty cursed, and I'm just starting to scratch the surface on testing this team, but I was able to get a really good team time in chamber one with Yoimiya, which although I wouldn't recommend the kids try that one at home, it is something you can do. This is the Burgeon team that I use, by the way. I don't really think it works without any of these. I think Baiju is a really, really important part, and so is Nahida, and so is Singcho for this team. If you want to learn more about it, definitely leave a comment, and I'll talk about how it works in a dedicated video. In terms of value, Yoimiya doesn't bring all that much value to your account, mostly because you're given Zhang Ling for free. I wouldn't put too much stock into this, however, because
because I would all I would say the exact same thing about Hu Tao. There's really not much reason to go for either of these characters because Zhang Ling exists. And it's even the same with Diluc. Pretty much all of these characters are outclassed by how strong Zhang Ling is. If I had to rank them, I would say Zhang Ling, then Hu Tao, then Yoimiya, then Diluc. Well, actually, then Dea, then Diluc. Sue me. But in terms of power, I still think she's pretty decent and definitely worth the pull if you like her and definitely worth the skip if you don't. One of my favorite things about her is her free-to-play friendliness in that the rust is so, so close to her signature weapon. A Refinement 5 rust is only about 10% behind her signature weapon, the Thundering Pulse, which is a very, very small amount because that only takes into account her personal damage, not even team damage. So it's going to be around 5% team damage increase, which is crazy. It is a bit of a downside for you low spenders who want to take her power to the next level by wishing for constellations or for her weapon. Who comes to mind as being a good character for that. You can get her C1 and her signature weapon and have a really, really strong power spike. Yoimi is not the same. Her first constellation is basically useless. You really need to honestly go all the way to C6 to see a really, really large increase from her constellations, and she does get a lot stronger at C6. But for low spenders, there's not that many good options there. But us free-to-plays who can enjoy Rust, or even her three-star weapon, the Slingshot, is actually really, really insane for her. It's only about 5% or less behind the Rust when it when they're both at Refinement 5. So if you don't have Rust, Slingshot is an amazing free-to-play bow. <clears throat> you're definitely going to want to use either Bennett or Yoon Jin or both when you're using the Slingshot to make up for its low base attack but the crit rate it gives and the passive it gives is really really synergistic with Yoimiya and she's one of the most free to play friendly five stars in the game. For artifacts I'm hunting for a four piece Crimson Witch of Flames so that I can take advantage of Virgin Yoimiya. Yep I do normally use Shimanawa's Reminiscence though because her burst is a very small part of her damage. It is technically her best set and because it's in the Emblem of Several Fates domain you're passively going to get probably a really great Shimanawa set, so she's very nice and account efficient in that way. Because she's so efficient with that set, your Yoimiya may end up being one of your better built characters if you're like me and spend so much time farming in the Emblem of Severed Fates domain that you'll just end up with really, really great Shimanawa pieces. So that's actually a really, really big positive for Yoimiya. For her talents, you're going to want to focus on her normal attack and then go to her skill and then lastly do her burst. You can leave her burst at even level six. I've seen some people not level it at all because they don't use it. I really like the look of her burst. It looks really cool. So I level mine up so it does good damage. But just remember to do the normal attack first, then the skill as you get a much bigger boost from the normal attack level up than you do from the skill. In terms of how she feels to play, it really, really depends on the type of content. If it's single target content, if it's annoying to fight content, she feels incredible to play. One of my favorite characters to play. I love her using her in the overworld. Hu Tao is miserable in the overworld because you keep losing HP and you lose so much stamina. On stamina drain chambers, chambers where you have to keep chasing after enemies, Yoimiya feels amazing. I'd say the only time she doesn't is in AoE that she can't kill the trash mobs really quickly. Some AoE is actually fine because she guns down the, tra the trash mobs really, really nicely. It just goes boom, boom, boom on one side, then she auto targets, boom, boom to the other side, then auto targets, boom, boom, and she'll clear the trash mobs even though she has no AoE, she'll actually clear faster because you don't have to spend any time running around. And I think that's really the part of Yoimiya that people don't get is when you sheet her numbers and when you sheet Hu Tao's numbers, you don't think about the, the time it takes you to run from one enemy to another and that time is dps right if you're running after an enemy if an enemy moves that's a dps loss if you can gun them down from a distance which you can't gun them down from a super super far distance for sure but from some amount of distance when they're running or moving around, Yoimiya doesn't have to run. And so it's a DPS gain in those situations. So there's definitely some chambers where Yoimiya will come out on top, even versus Hu Tao. The one downside for this for me is if you run a Hyper Bloom team with Nahida, Nahida Yalan also has that Hyper Bloom range. The Hyper Blooms travel really far and they auto target onto enemies. They auto target even a little bit better than Yoimiya's arrows do. And so that is that is the biggest disappointment, I would say, if, if you're comparing her to other options, is that her kind of niche was, was kind of just taken over a little bit by Hyper Bloom, which is a little bit annoying, but it doesn't make it her any less good. And I suppose overall, it's nice that free to plays have an option that's not a limited five star that can deal with those really annoying enemies. So overall, I definitely think it's a positive for the game, and it is still a positive for Yoimiya. For future prospects, I definitely think it's possible that Yoimiya continues to receive characters that have good synergy. As more normal attack focused characters come out in the future, there could, there's always the potential for more normal attack buffers 
or more normal attack support in the future. And so I could definitely see Yoimiya getting a partner here and there. But I think she's in a pretty decent spot it's at the lower end of A tier. For overworld and aesthetic, I've talked about it a bit before. She's one of my favorite characters for the overworld because she doesn't need her burst. She doesn't need to run. She doesn't need to see. If you're doing some daily commissions, she just auto targets all the enemies around you without you even having to think. Even if you're obscured by Kazuo's burst, she just guns down all the enemies all around you. Same with domains, even if there's trash mobs, it's just boom, 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 and they're all dead before you know it. She also has amazing synergy with Yulan, who is one of the best characters for the overworld. And of course, her aesthetic. I mean, she has one of the coolest, funniest voice actors in the game. One of the best outfits in the game, in my opinion. I love this character. And if you love her, don't let the people saying she's not good convince you not to get her. She's got her niches that make her worth it if you love her. Yaimiko's on the banner as well. I made an awesome video on Yaimiko. Check it out right there. Another one of those underrated characters. Bye for now.